This is the first session for this afternoon in this room. We'll have, after this session, a break, and after, we'll have four lightning talks to enjoy. But before that, we have to enjoy this great presentation that we have to give to you. So we have a story, a journey, that our two uh, presenters already took on their way to building something different related to the transformation of a legacy website on a Blocks website. So Erica and uh, Luis started a project. They had some issues, they had some troubles. It was a long winding road until they found something that can help all of you do the same and avoid some traps on the way. So a big welcome to Erica and Luis. I take that place. So you test, test. Okay, it's working. Hello. Do you want one? Yes, please. One? No, no, take okay. you the. Okay. One. Okay, we are here. Hello, everyone. It's really heartwarming seeing the uh, whole old field. <laughs> 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 so please bear with us. We are really excited. Uh, Luis uh, is has his first experience as a WordCamp uh, speaker. So Thank you. Have be, be <laughs> kind to him. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> first time ever. <laughs> so. so let's do it. Uh, here are some links to connect and get in touch with us, so please uh, spam us. <laughs> and now I will say, let's begin. We are going to tell you a story, uh, the story of our experience with uh, our customer, the University of Luxembourg, and uh, their need of a brand new website, but filled with the content from the old website that they were already uh, having. Uh, we are going to present you this experience uh, in a mm, logical way, let's say, because the chronological one uh, would have been more difficult uh, for you to understand and to have uh, important takeaways. So, uh, we got this new challenging project uh, full of great features to develop because it was uh, a brand new website. And um, then, like a thunder in the night, the client asked, Please migrate my legacy website. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, a migration is already a daunting task, but uh, we had to acknowledge the following boundaries. Um, first of all, the client wanted to uh, migrate only selected content to avoid bringing to the new website content that was not meant to be neither in the old one, like, for example, personal pictures. Luis. In addition to that, this client required to insert new content into the system because maybe the old content was inaccurate and they wanted to transform it to the new design, right? So one part of this uh, content, the majority of it, was having a structure. That was, for example, uh, study programs, research projects, and so on. And another part was content that was informative pages or something like that that was uh, much less, okay? Uh, but the real challenge of this new content was to understand how we are going to receive this information in a way that we can insert it into the system. Right, Erika? Yes. And also, we were working into a consortium of agencies. So um, every agency wanted uh, their voice heard into this project, and we had to uh, acknowledge these multiple stakeholders into the project. So to add some spice to this challenge, there was the 20th anniversary of the university, and we had to have the site by that date. Okay, so we have only a few time to do it, and it was, yes. Yes, and uh, additionally, the design was not ready when we needed it uh, to start developing uh, the, uh, the UI. So uh, we put also some extra effort uh, to collaborate with the client and achieve uh, an organization and a finalization of the design. In addition, this client had previous uh, knowledge about WordPress. So when we were, we were discovering the design, we understood and this client was demanding uh, specific features, like for example, uh, they didn't want to have uh, the possibility to add links to the headings or 
after discovering the requirements, we understood that we had to remove the cropping from the images because they will have a lot of things in the media folder, something like that. So um, this is a university, right? So we were understanding this business with them. Well, they knew their business, but we were understanding it. And they have a core a concept, which, which was the study programs. Uh, this is, uh, aside from that, they had also another core concept that was the research project, which was uh, for alumni uh, to do them. So we started to see these pieces uh, from a puzzle. And uh, there were also like integration with APIs, uh, obviously the blogs that we mentioned before, research areas, research groups, uh, and finally, they were mentioning at some point of the project CSV files. Yes, and the other pieces of these puzzles were uh, news and events that you obviously university organizes uh, uh, events. And um, the content related to the people, like uh, the researchers, the professors that uh, uh, want their um, profile seen on the uh, corporate website. Additionally, we had uh, also the complexity of uh, having uh, a brand new website, uh, brand new design that was really different from the old one because uh, the university obviously was aiming for a full redesign of the website. And uh, another little architectural uh, complexity was the VPN that was uh, between the old server and the rest of the world. So we had also to manage that. Uh, uh, all of this was meant to be spread uh, on a web, uh, WordPress multi-site. You may ask, why are you adding some this kind of complexity? Well, in this case, the multi-site uh, was uh, easing our job because uh, the university is a collection of entities uh, like faculties, centers, and other little entities that they have. So uh, a multi-site was the best option possible to manage the user access on each of these entities. Entities. And also because at a company level, we develop a product <laughs> that is used to um, have multilingual websites with uh, multi-sites. So it was uh, the, uh, uh, a circle that was closing, let's say. Yep. <laughs> And uh, from this cauldron of uh, features, architectural boundaries, uh, and content, we found uh, our way to categorize and group uh, these uh, um, type of contents based on what format uh, uh, this content was uh, uh, provided uh, from, the, from the customer. And we could recognize four different type of migrations. For example, we have uh, the news and events here that was uh, only content, so we decided to uh, grab that from the old database, and uh, that was a migration from the old database to WordPress. While uh, um, the people, for example, it was uh, um, a migration from both the old database and uh, using the new APIs. Sorry, Luis, this was yes. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> and, uh, uh, and that was another kind of different migration that was not like this. And uh, new content. The new content, do you want to protect this? Yeah, no worries. <laughs> and then. Um, we had these CSV files. So I mentioned before that for us was a challenge to understand how the, this client will provide this information to us. So what worked at the end was to provide to the client um, uh, directories containing PDFs with a new design with input fields where these uh, people from their internal subdivisions were about to put the information and they were requested to also put the images that they wanted to use on those pages in the same directory and the path, the relative path in within that folder. So we later received this information, we parse it, we build the CSV files and later we use that to insert it into the system. But what is also interesting is that we started to understand several things that, okay, these tracks, these th different types, have some similarities too. And this concept of symmetries is, was replicated later in other contexts. For example, we understood that there were blocks, there were some tracks that required custom development, which was, for example, the system, the study program, sorry. And uh, in the case of the people, uh, we had to handle private images into the system. And uh, yeah, 
yeah, more or less uh, only this. <laughs> and the last track was the manual migration. Yeah. Wh when the content was not following on a structure, we could use just a manual migration for that. Yeah. So the takeaways of this part was um, you want to engage with your stakeholders because you are going to have a lot of meetings with them and in order to discover or understand the real scope of the project. Okay, uh, at the beginning it was very unclear, so this is very important if you are tackling a big website. And uh, also you want to divide this massive amount of concepts uh, in things that you can later tackle. Yeah. So after knowing the scope of this project, we needed to come out with a plan. So and for, a, for that, we used many tools. So the first tool that we used for that was uh, Project Libre, which is an open source software. It allows you to build these Gantt charts. Um, to be honest, at this stage, when we used that, we did it because it was required by the client. Uh, and uh, we didn't know uh, all the requirements by this stage. So, but it was good to uh, have a high level estimation of several tracks and also to understand the dependencies within them. So, you may ask, and how you came with some estimation? Well, we didn't complicate it ourselves. So, what we did is divide okay, this track is the problems it requires requirements, solution design, implementation, QA, user acceptance test, and the minimum duration was five days. Obviously, later, uh, we could see there that we got some definitions, and we, we updated the chart, uh, but this was only working at the beginning of the project. But, so we have to come out with something better. And uh, so we also tested another tool, which is uh, Confluence. Uh, we used it to, for many, many reasons. One was documentation, project, project documentation, technical documentation. We also use it to understand the design. So we received the design, the final design, and there was many pages with many, many components, visual elements, and uh, we started to divide it in smaller chunks and also organize what do I need to have first in order to build the, the, the bigger elements. So this chart, uh, we created a Confluence page we put there a chart and we started putting images, as you can see in the slide, and this grew a lot. There were like 100 lines there, and at the end this was very hard to update, uh, to get the status and everything, so we had to find a better way to organize ourselves. Yes, it was just not the right tool. Yeah. And another tool uh, we used a lot uh, as a shared tool with the client uh, has been uh, Google Sheets. Uh, this is one example, uh, it's a scope file. Uh, we used it uh, as a um, technical and uh, um, contractual documentation uh, and uh, it has been uh, useful to list uh, every post that was meant to be migrated. Another example uh, is uh, this, the evolution of the control chart. Um, is uh, a Google Sheet, uh, as you can see, uh, with uh, all the blocks mapping. So uh, it has been compiled uh, in collaboration with the designers of the new design system. And because we were overwhelmed by not understanding well the picture of this design system, uh, the co Confluence control chart was not helping us. And uh, uh, we basically asked for help for the designers. Please break <laughs> this design because we are not getting it. And they were uh, not understanding well our need. Uh, so this definition was uh, their, uh, their guide. Please break this design into page-wide sections of content. From that, they created this, li this list. Uh, of sections, we have called uh, them. And the developers uh, have, have taken these sections and break down, broke down into smaller chunks, atoms, let's say, um, that the, they uh, developed and uh, composed these sections as uh, um, a composition of these uh, uh, little atoms. Um, important uh, in this file, apart from the list, uh, is this little number that uh, you may see here, it's uh, the number of times uh, this block is used. 
uh, as you may understand, more uh, high, higher is the number of the times a block is used, um, more relevant was the block to be, migra to be migrated, yes, and more relevant was to be developed. So um, we will see uh, how we used this number soon. And another tool uh, that we used uh, to manage the, mm, project. the project was Jira, okay. And uh, these main features uh, were helping us. Uh, first of all, the components. Obviously, we have used uh, Epix, but the components helped us uh, to break the, mm, the, the, tracks. Uh, the tracks, exactly, to have parallel tracks uh, with uh, an SNE, a basic SNE, and uh, uh, some other little features that uh, we, we were testing, and uh, it was uh, successful yeah. as a test. Uh, then uh, we created custom fields, uh, the priority number, and the design preview. Uh, that were, were meant specifically for the issues uh, on the custom blocks, because the basic uh, fields that we were getting were not enough. And uh, we uh, used a lot of filters and dashboards to create lookups, lookup tables, uh, on the prioritized uh, fields, uh, on using the prioritized fields to have the picture of the blocks to, to of the next block to develop. <laughs> because right. as we have se said, we were running <laughs> <laughs> under stress. This is an example, um, a portion of a dashboard. Here you can see the uh, blocks ordered by this priority number. And uh, you may have understood this is the number of time a block uh, is used. <laughs> and uh, it's served uh, like this. Uh, we, we, will we see here that 40 times we have this section. And, uh, but what, what is section uh, link 01? The developers were freaking out <laughs> with these labels. So the design preview was helping them to uh, understand uh, at a visual uh, uh, level, mm -hmm. uh, the, the type of lock that they were assigned to, and also it served a lot with the client to uh, understand, uh, are you developing the right block? Yes, <laughs> it's this. <laughs> okay, the takeaways from this uh, part are, again, understand your scope, please, <laughs> because uh, the uh, perimeter is uh, where you are going to play with, let's say, and to have the dependencies inside your perimeter and to assess the priorities between these dependencies. Because when you start to have a team of developers, of eight developers, uh, you don't want anyone to stay uh, um, uh, still, let's say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> waiting for uh, the priorities from other things. Uh, so that's why we had uh, a, a good time of assessing priorities. And uh, also that estimating a uh, complex migration is really, really difficult. Luis has shown uh, the GAN chart that we developed at the beginning. It's an high level, uh, okay. But when we start to dig uh, deeper, uh, it was hard to foresee all the roadblocks. So, um, uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard yes. to give to the client a deadline. Uh, okay. Opla, that's back. Let's continue. So, after having all this definition of the planning, uh, we started the project, right? So, for as uh, Erika mentioned before, um, the blocks were the the critical path of this project because of the manual migration. Uh, it is true that we had a lot of automatic migration, but it's it was also true that in order to apply that, you have to have the blocks. And also for the manual migration, th it was a reasonable amount of uh, pages that they needed to build. And you don't want to put your manual migration in a stress like, oh, this block is failing. I need to do a change. And they need to do again the page, and again, and again, and again. So you need to be really um, accurate on delivering the blocks very early and very good. Also, very well tested, so you can run your migrations after. And so we tackled all all, the, all of these in parallel. So one team was working on the visual elements, and another team was working on the business logic implemented for the study programs. So in the old website, there was a spaghetti code rendering the, the courses of a program. And we said, OK, we are going to own this business logic for you. We let the client know about that. And uh, also, uh, we started to work on the automated migration for the news and events that the system was required. So um, 
we did all that, taking into consideration the priority number that Erika showed before <laughs> for the blocks. And uh, so we started to call, but let's talk about that. And here start the heavy part of this uh, session. <laughs> so this was our website architecture. We detected that we could uh, divide the project by domain because we had these bigger concepts, study programs, research projects, people. So we created a modules plugin for each of those. And uh, we orchestrated everything using Composer and a package which is, which is open source called WP Starter. And uh, we did heavy use of dependency injection. Okay, um, this is to not having to instantiate all over the place heavy services, complex services, and also to have singletons of those to not, uh, you know, occupy too much memory. And for that, we use a tool called Modularity from our company. Check it out; it's amazing. It allows you to create uh, service containers for plugins and connect them somehow, and then you have access to the services of. Uh, the, the, the defining on those containers. And finally, uh, we relied on interfaces instead of implementations. And let me tell you why that is very good. So basically, this having interfaces or, or coding, using interfaces allows you to plan upfront your code. We were able to parallelize some tasks. Uh, in the case of the study programs, we agreed a shape you are going to receive this, that was the interface. We put that in a centralized place. I will talk about that later. And this front-end developer was able to mock, which is the second point of this slide, uh, an implementation for that uh, study program it, with dummy content. And that allowed him to work on the front-end, while the back-end developer was also uh, working on the Integration with API, resolving the problem of how to render this program or build them, which was our case. Then um, we put these interfaces in a composer library to centralize them, all of them. That it was a, a library that only had that interfaces. So for us, it was really easy to detect when something required refactoring because as soon as we saw a, modif a modification in one of the files of in, in that package, we knew that we triggered the alert and, okay, we need to change the consumers because this is changing. Uh, while the actual implementation, the code is, that is within, it was changing in another package with another velocity which was faster. Then, what about the blocks? Well, most of them were custom because of these needs from the editors. We wanted to simplify their life. We, we, wanted, we didn't want to expose too many uh, flexibility. And um, also, when you have a big team, we were eight developers, many QA, and also the content moderation team, many, many people involved in the project. But let's talk about the developers. You have a team of eight. You want that everybody is using some symmetry, the same tools, same factories to render a button, for example. So we built this abstraction layer. Uh, it did basically two things. It transformed the associative array that comes from the render callback from Gutenberg into a plain PHP object. And also, it enforced the developer to use factories to run the code, to render the blocks. Um, to be honest, this was adding an overhead for less experienced developers, it has slowed us a little bit down, but we created code that was maintainable. Uh, to ease this thing, we created a boiler generator uh, to put in place the classes that were needed to render the blocks. And by the way, we did not use any ACF or similar to create the custom attributes in the system. So um, this is a um, a diagram of the delegation of responsibility in the domain-driven design that we've implemented for this, uh, in, in this abstraction. And uh, in here, uh, I don't want to go into much detail, but you can see uh, a method called iterate config. It was a bad decision. Okay, we want to tell you also the bad things that we did. Um, we were using the Symfony Serializer to automatically iterate this um, object of attributes from the associative array that we were receiving from Gutenberg. 
Symphony Initializer is a great tool. It allows you uh, to do a complex stuff like that automatically with one line, but it also uses reflection and many things to understand how to iterate that class. If you do that in a context of one page and you have 1,000 blocks, you will hit a performance issue, but the problem was easily solved because we basically override this method on the consumer and uh, did the, the mapping manually. This is a UML diagram for you when you get the slides. You can check it out later. And uh, let's talk about the code. So this is the factory of the one of the most complex blocks in the system. This is rendering the courses listed for a semester within a study program. So we are proud about these kind of factories because as you can see, first we were able to have typed attributes, and when you have objects that have typed properties, you also get validation for free. And uh, because it's a plain popo, it's plain old PHP object. And uh, secondly, we could inject other services, heavy services. In this case, in point two, we are using the program repository. We use a repository pattern, factory pattern, many design patterns in this project. So we were retrieving all the information uh, for this specific semester. And finally, the, the abstraction uh, had a small layer, uh, very, very low, um, that had like a view. The view knew where the template were. And basically, we had all the logic in the factory, and we grabbed all the digesting information, and we put it, pass it that to the view, and the thing get rendered. So we had two kinds of HTML to render, the one that was rendered by the blocks, and the one that was rendered to be inserted into the database that contained the uh, serialized attribute object. So that was, uh, we wanted to test um, not having the type, the type attributes and use associative arrays in this, uh, in this, for this kind of uh, HTML that we had to build. But it was a really bad experience because as you can see, we were using linters. We needed to tell the linter, hey, you say, this is the, the, the keys that we are receiving in this array and you cannot uh, centralize these definitions and the image, for example, we were using many blocks. So, at the end, it was uh, a nightmare, and we learned that uh, maintain Gutenberg HTML markup is really hard. So we have reached the core of the, of the one of the business core of the university, and uh, this was uh, the process to build them. So let's focus a little bit on the right. Uh, we have. A page, uh, this was a post type for us, a study program page. We wanted some symmetry with other tracks, the, program, the projects, and, the, the, and many others. So the pages contained blocks that were dynamic and blocks that were manual. So um, this, um, to build these study programs and to be able to pull them, we received courses. These courses, um, you may ask, okay, I need to render a study program. How do I know which courses belong to this program? And the client said, okay, you have an array of the different combination of programs that you can have for, a, uh, for this course within, in, a, in a study program. That meant that we had the same information of study program in several courses. So we did a winding of this array and we inserted all the information in a network table, that, like a middle step, and then we run another uh, command. Those were WPCLI command, by the way. Um, and this command was having the business logic from the client that we call the dog logic. This was an internal thing uh, to relax a little bit. And uh, with that information, we were able to create our shape of the study programs containing all the courses, all the semesters, everything perfect. It was our model, not their model. And thanks God we did that. This is called anti-corruption layering software. And uh, after getting that, we inserted it into an Elasticsearch index. And that was very good because later they added another source that we need to use in order to get the information of a study program. And that's it. Later, we could pull the information using the repository. 
Right, Erika? Yes. Something similar we added the ah, thank you. this drink. <laughs> 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 for the for the research projects. Uh, as you can see here we have a similar structure, but let's begin from the beginning. Uh, Research projects, another uh, uh, core um, business of the university, uh, was meant to be provided by the customer with an API that uh, in that moment uh, of the migration was missing, uh, taken by, by a crocodile and a dragon. Yeah. Yeah, because we need to have fun sometimes. And uh, okay, uh, so how do we uh, resolve this issue? Uh, we uh, created uh, a logic that was future-proof. So uh, when this API will be ready, it uh, will be easy to switch uh, to the API. But for now, we mock this API. We created a um, core uh, custom post type that was mocking the API and a page, research project, page post type, uh, the core one, uh, since it was mocking the API, um, was uh, meant only to um, collect uh, meta information of these uh, research projects. While the page custom post type was meant to um, display the pages to the end users in, uh, uh, on, the, on, on the website. So no, nothing uh, uh, like an API, let's say. And um, they are connected between, uh, with, with this uh, uh, structure because we have uh, the research project page that is built with a collection of blocks. Some blocks uh, were using our repository uh, pattern to grab the information uh, from the core uh, connected research project uh, page, while other blocks uh, were available for the editors uh, to insert uh, any other content. So these pages at the end were a mix of automated blocks and manual uh, content blocks. Another completely different kind of uh, um, business logic has been created for the news and events that are the type of contents that were only content. So uh, let's take them from the old database. Okay, the old database is uh, the legacy uh, CMS database. Um, I analyzed this uh, database and I created it, uh, the scope application with two main purposes. Uh, first of all, the scope file, the, the creation of the scope file that we have seen at the beginning of this uh, uh, presentation. And uh, then the creation, the second purpose, the creation of a digested database with uh, um, the data from the old database reorganized in a comfortable way for me <laughs> to uh, insert them uh, uh, into WordPress. And this has been uh, run all uh, on my local, but it was uh, possible to run, be run on every local because of this VPN uh, issue we have talked about uh, at the beginning. Then uh, I created uh, a migration plugin on WordPress uh, as a collection of custom WPCLI commands that were basically this. One command to create the post another command to export the redirections because I was having the uh, old uh, content uh, URLs, so it was easy for me to connect them with the new content URLs and create the redirections. Uh, another command to create the, the terms uh, for the taxonomies of news and events. And uh, the last one to reset everything if uh, we have uh, done something wrong <laughs> because uh, we uh, marked every content uh, from posts to terms uh, in this track and the other tracks so everything was marked with a meta information that uh, if the migration would have been uh, failed we could delete uh, all the only the migrated content not touching the one that the client was in the meantime adding the most complex uh, part here has been this. You can say, why markup transformer? Uh, what are we talking about? The old uh, CMS was using an XML format to store the content. And uh, I didn't want to take also parts of the code of the old CMS to, as, to, to act as a black box. I provide you the XML and you provide me the HTML. No, because I needed a um, tailored approach to this HTML creation. First of all, because uh, we were talking about custom Gutenberg blocks. So this HTML needs to be customized to the blocks that we are developing. 
Second, because um, it has been not a direct transformation between one XML tag to its counterpart in HTML, but in some times I needed to hack a little uh, this transformation and have another different uh, HTML tag. For example, the tables, we have uh, eliminated all the tables because uh, they were really, really um, hacky from the old CMS because it permitted the client to put inside a lot of things. So it was really a mess to try to uh, migrate them. And the client said, cut them. And so in this way, we could cut. In other cases, we could just transform from a tag to another because I created this mid layer instead of using something already created. The key part of uh, this markup transformer has been using um, exceptions, a lot, everywhere. Everything was, uh, if not managed correctly, was uh, uh, raising an exception. And in this way, I could co catch every single uh, edge case of the content. In, and indeed, the migration was uh, stable. If uh, uh, I didn't need to uh, manually check the content after the migration and change something because I, I didn't manage this, no, it was everything managed. In this way, the migration could be run every time with having the same results. And uh, this because of this layer of exceptions. <laughs> and uh, OK, this has been the first, chronologically, the first uh, migration uh, with uh, a massive uh, amount of data. And uh, um, we foreseen uh, issues here. <laughs> and uh, we have been great thinking about uh, um, having this process uh, run in uh, batches. So uh, passing to my WP commands uh, uh, parameters to create chunks of this data uh, allowed us to avoid the memory exhaust limit on the server. <laughs> and so please consider this kind of approach. I know that is a little stressful uh, to create pagination, but it pays. <laughs> OK, we have finished uh, with the complex diagrams uh, with emojis. We have only this one <laughs> left. Uh, this because uh, it has been uh, really uh, a good strategy to um, create uh, reusable uh, um, packages for uh, um, the code that was um, uh, used in multiple uh, places. For example, we have uh, mm, the loading of images in every type of content uh, migrated. So we decided, OK, let's create a migration common plugin that uh, hosts this kind of uh, services. And every package that does a migration can hook on it and use it. Uh, same for the Gutenberg HTML markup uh, resolver. And same for the terms, because every post type has uh, its taxonomies and uh, its terms. So we abstracted everything into a common plugin. OK, mm, not every migration runs smoothly. Otherwise, <laughs> it would be heaven. <laughs> In this case, the people, uh, we have foreseen at a certain point that uh, no, I'm sorry, but we can't make it uh, for uh, the deadline. What can we do? Uh, the people were requested for the deadline. So uh, we agreed a negotiation with the client, uh, providing a Partial migration. So, uh, OK, you are going to have uh, your API integrations uh, to the SAP and to other content so that you are going to show the real content on the new website. <laughs> really cool. But uh, what we are missing here are the blocks. Indeed, uh, we uh, created the, the front end uh, of the pages showing all this content, but without uh, having the um, pages uh, um, in the editor, so dynamic pages. Uh, it uh, uh, was useful because uh, we didn't uh, need to uh, build the um, logic behind the blocks and to show them what you see is what you get in the editor and so on. So the client. Uh, was happy because we were showing uh, the data, N was not so happy because uh, he they couldn't uh, change the data, but uh, OK, negotiation, <laughs> a compromise. So uh, the takeaways for this period of the project was to 
you want to parallelize uh, the task in different developers. Uh, you want to share documentation as early as possible. In our case, we were having also the team remotely. And you want to make sure that they have access to it 24-7 uh, hours a day and a week. So you want also to reuse as much as possible. Mm, as we show in the Maration Common plugin, it was doing many tasks. And um, these migration commands can be resource, resource intensive or not. Um, in our case, when we run these migration commands, we were running it twice. We had navigation in the pages, so in the and also images. In the first run, we were uploading the images, mark everything that was created by the migration, and we created all the pages that were required for the navigation. And in the second run, we were updating these pages to build the navigation properly, but we didn't have to upload the file again because we knew it was already uploaded because we were able to fetch it. And um, also, the multi-site arrangement for different languages simplified the migration because we didn't have to, you know, look at intermediate tables, where is the translation text, or something like that. And having a multi-site and having different languages, you put the content in that language in that in that table, and that's it. It was easy. And uh, we learned that the team is as important as the client. Uh, we face it a lot of stress, too, because the deadline we couldn't move it. And it was a lot of work. And you want to be uh, collaborative. You want to be supported. Uh, many times we block each other, and we say, OK, well, what, what is the problem? How can we solve uh, this problem? How can I help you? So we had to tackle this um, with them. So it is really cool when you have done all the project and you can see what you have achieved. You have completed everything. And then you see the result. So this is. Uh, yeah, it's. I don't know, this yeah, it's yours. OK, <laughs> you can no worries. So <laughs> this is the editor, and uh, this is how it looked like. So as you can see, this is what you see is what you get. We had many custom blocks. Uh, this wrapper block was amazing by one of the colleagues that maybe is here. <laughs> and uh, also, the experience for the editors was really great. They, they, they were astonished when they saw this editor. We were having a project manager at the beginning that was just like, like this. Yes. <laughs> and let's uh, show them our. Uh, Magnificent <laughs> work. <laughs> this is uh, 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 one of our custom sections. Uh, as you can see, is what you see is what you get. Uh, and every block, uh, more or less, is what you see is what you get. And uh, these are the same blocks used uh, in the migration uh, commands. So we didn't uh, um, need to create something different to run uh, automatically with our commands because of the layer of uh, factories and so on that Luis has shown, the, the block is just the same, only uh, hooked from something uh, different. different positions. And uh, you may know it's difficult to, to read. We have um, created a lot of custom blocks. OK. And uh, why? Because the core blocks in that moment uh, were not enough uh, for us, because we needed to uh, change the settings, uh, have uh, custom settings, and uh, we were feeling some stress, so we decided to just ca go custom. <laughs> no, and also because um, uh, the client was one of the companies of the consortium that we were working. They were supplying us the HTML and CSS, and we had to follow it because accessibility and many other things. So it was hard to, to change the core blocks for that and yeah. to turn off everything. Here uh, we have another type of lock. Uh, we are into a study program page. In this page, uh, you have to link the study program. Then you can add uh, okay, the section, the standard container section that uh, was needed for the padding. And then the course offer that is linking to the study program. It uh, is requesting the semester number. And uh, bam, we have uh, all the data from the database filled uh, into this, con this, uh, this block. And this is the editor. 
so inside the editor. You have uh, all the functionality there. The experience for, for the user was amazing. This is another kind of uh, um, research project score, so you may know that it's uh, only a meta uh, custom post type. So we created this form into a block, uh, the only one admitted because it's a template where uh, the editors can fulfill the, the content that should have been given by the API. And so uh, we reached the uh, the, the, the website has been migrated <laughs> magically. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, uh, we have seen, uh, oh my god, there are so many pages created with our system. And we were experiencing uh, uh, a sensation like being uh, hikers in the top of the mountain, breathing <laughs> the beauty of oh, the boots, <laughs> in this yeah. case, the beauty of the design system. Because it was uh, working. Wow! <laughs> And anything of this would have been possible without uh, our team. Here you can see only the developers, uh, the, the team of smiling faces, right, Luis? Yes, <laughs> but uh, uh, apart from that, we had also QA's, content moderation team, the product owner, which was amazing, and uh, also the consortium team. So, yeah. A, a big, big, big thing. A big thing. And that being saying, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I survived. <laughs> okay, everyone. Thanks, Erica and Luis. Awesome job. We have a present for you. You can collect right now at this moment. Woo. There's unfortunately no time for questions and answers, but uh, Eric and Luis will be uh, available for you to ask if uh, want to enlightenment in some aspects of the presentation.